Barbecue season isn't our, you know, we're, we're not here to show how to barbecue corn or anything like that. Now, now that? This is an old detailer's trick. You want to cover up things like wiper arms so you don't have to detail them later. You just wrap them up with some tin foil. That or use a tube sock. You got an extra tube I, sock. You know, I forgot my tube socks today. So, uh, and you're also dating yourself if you're calling them tube socks. <laughs> <laughs> See how fast that is? And it's completely covered up. And later on, I don't got to take a toothbrush and get all the little splatter dots Preventive out. Preventive tips, people. Preventive tips. And you can wrap up your lunch with it later on. Right, well, they're dual purpose. All right, we are back again. Thank you all for tuning in to another edition of Auto Geek's live detailing classes with the one and only Mike Phillips and the talk box me. Where's Cardboard Mike? Cardboard Mike didn't make it today. <laughs> Obviously, uh, he didn't have enough to eat, so he withered away. Um, but what we are doing today is we're showing a new coating. Look at that. That's an amazing coating. It, uh, you can wash it. You can wash it and just wash put machine. it back on. Put it back on. No, but what are we doing today? We're gonna do glass polishing. Okay, and why would you want to polish your glass? Well, there's two kinds of glass polishing. There's topical glass polishing and subsurface glass polishing. And we're gonna show how to do the subsurface type. It's okay. the hard type. And that would be like wiper marks, pits, you know, yeah, stuff like scratches. that. Scratches, wiper marks, scratches. Topical is- uh, Like tree sap and all the other stuff No, mostly like road Water film, stuff. road film. Okay. So every time you drive your car in the rain, the car in front of you throws the water on the highway that mixes with the oil, oil from all the cars that leak oil onto your car and over time it builds up road okay. film. Okay, all right, I got you. All right, so with that and being- wa And water spots. And water spots. Yeah. And um, so and hard water, if, you, if you're unfortunate and you live in an apartment complex that have hard water and you get stuck yeah. with the sprinklers right next to your car and- yeah. Well, I got another term. What's that? Drizzle stains. Oh, well. So sometimes when you wipe your glass on your car and you can see where water has drizzled down ah. it over time and left a stain, so that's called drizzle stains. Yep. So okay. that would be topical polishing. Okay, cool. All right, so that is what our topic is today. I want to say thank you all for tuning in. Also remember to like, share, and all the other jazz, you know, subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff so that we always know when we're going live. And plus all your questions and comments, write it down, or all your questions and everything like that, write it in the comment section. So that way Al will jump behind the computer and we'll get those asked throughout the show. And also we have a question and answer session at the very end. So if we don't cover it at the beginning or during the show, we'll try to get through all the uh, questions. Speed round, remember? Speed, Speed round. round. At the end of the thing. <laughs> That's right, go real slow. Yeah, he's wanting to go really slow today. We have low energy mics, so we're gonna try to hype him up, people. Um, so with that being said, it looks like you have tons of products and you have a whole bunch of stuff. So why don't you go over what we're going to be doing and I'm going to go back over here. Okay. Uh, you know, every time, um, every time I show polishing glass on any social media platform, I get asked a lot of questions about it. And most of the time people are asking if what I'm doing is removing scratches out of glass. And most of the time it's not. Most of the time, all I'm doing is polishing the road film, the drizzle stains, and the water spots off the outside of the glass because over time it builds up. It builds up on the paint, it builds up on the glass. And for that, you can use you know, a water spot remover, any kind of polish. In fact, um, if you've ever looked at any of my write-ups, a lot of times you'll see the car with the compound on it and you'll see it on the glass. And what I tell people is what, when, you, when it comes to removing the stuff on the glass, not scratches, but the stuff on the glass. So a road film basically and water spots. Glass isn't that picky. Whatever you're using on the paint, if it's clear coat safe, it's probably glass safe. So whatever's on your pad after you're done doing the hood or the roof, run it over the glass, okay? And uh, I kind of learned this because I started out detailing cars in Oregon. And you gotta understand in Oregon, it rains a lot. And so a lot of times my customers would come to me with neglected cars with water spots in the paint, but they also had water spots on the glass because it rains a lot. And here's the deal. You cannot detail somebody's car, make the paint all shiny, and give your customer back their car with water spots on the glass. So 
I always practiced polishing all the glass on all the cars, and then kind of one of the things I learned is if you wash the car and then polish the glass, you'll end up getting, you know, splatter around the oh. edges of the window frame. And on the side windows, you got that fuzzy gasket or rubber gaskets, and you get, now you gotta clean it again. So here's what I did is I learned that when I'm dieseling a car, this would be back in Oregon, the first thing I would do is polish all the glass, then wash the car. And as I wash the car, I would get all the splatter out of the thing. So I don't gotta repeat steps, make sense? So that's one type of glass polishing. It's top, I call it topical glass polishing, and it's something every detailer should do. And you can use any quality compound, a foam pad, wool pad, microfiber pad, gear-driven, free spinning, work by hand. doesn't really matter. It's not that big a deal, but it is important to do. But what we're going to show today is the really hard thing to do, and that's polishing out scratches that are in the glass. Wiper marks here. Let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to show them. Yeah, these are wiper marks, and this car's got it really bad. <laughs> that, uh, that. That's why we chose it, to show you. And, and, um, and I'll tell you a little story. I probably have more how-to articles on polishing glass than anybody breathing. And because of that, I oftentimes have people contact me through various methods and ask me how to polish the glass on their car. I tell them what they need and they buy it. And then the next thing I hear from them is, I gave up. Yeah. It was really hard. I told them it was hard. <laughs> and, uh, and it takes a lot of muscle. It takes a lot of time. And the reason it takes muscle and time is because glass itself, glass yeah. itself is hard, okay? It's not going to give up you know, itself, material as you braid it like paint will. So because it's hard, it becomes very difficult to polish. Now, I'd also say that a lot of people that have had major scratching problems in their glass after trying to polish it out with a product like this, CarPro's Glass, which contains cerium oxide, what they've done is just given up and had the windows replaced. And that's fairly easy to do on, say, a modern car, but I, I do know that I, I've worked on a lot of classic cars, and, and here's an example. Uh, about a year ago, uh, believe it or not, they found two 1967 Shelby Mustangs in a barn. I know, it was the year 2019. There are still cool cars waiting to be discovered in barns. And the windshields on them were very scratched up, so I machine polished them out. They could have replaced them, but they didn't want to. Not, not so much to ruin the originalness of the car, but because they knew once they pulled that windshield out, they were gonna find rust, and that was gonna start a money pit. Hey, let's fix the rust here. Hey, now look, it went down here. Okay, let's, hey, let's just tear the whole car apart. People don't wanna do that, so it's easier to polish out the glass than it is to do a full restoration on something because you found some rust in the channels where the glass is held into the window frame. And um, uh, so anyway, so, uh, there are times and reasons to polish glass versus try to replace it, and it has to do with uh, the unexpected expenses you would discover trying to replace or uh, t fixing rust you would find in classic cars. And usually, if you think about it, a classic car, an older car, there's a really good chance the glass is scratched up because it's been through so many owners you know, over time, so it's going to be scratched up. Anyway, so... When it comes to polishing glass, there's two things you need to know besides subsurface and topical, and that's the type of products we use. This is a product from CarPro that we carry at AutoGeek, so after watching this, if you want to try, you can go to AutoGeek and get this and the pads. And this contains a, what they call a rare earth mineral, mineral called cerium oxide. Dude, I'm going to get up close, so just keep it there. And you, you have, and if you want to take scratches out of the glass, you've got to have a polish that contains cerium oxide. And why is that? Um, because the mineral is also hard like the glass, so it will abrade it, but at the same time, it won't leave its own scratch behind. So there's some magic going on there that I don't even understand and I don't really care to understand. I just know it works. <laughs> so Magic some, voodoo in the bottle. Magic voodoo juice. I, sometimes I just don't care to play the chemist. You know, I just know it works because I've been doing this for years. Anyway, so if you want to take scratches out, it starts with having the right polish. Not any polish will work. You must find where it lists cerium oxide as an ingredient. The next thing you're going to need is a glass polishing pad. And... Um, can I'm gonna you hold one of those up for that way I can zoom, just tilt sure. it up right there so that way yeah right there. This is a rayon glass polishing pad. It's very hard, okay? Very hard and coarse. 
and it's going to work together with abrasives to abrade the glass to level the grass. So you actually don't remove a scratch. You, le you remove all this, the glass around a scratch and it levels it and it visually disappears. But physically, or you don't actually take scratches out of glass, you just level the surface. If you can wrap your brain around that one. Oh, it's kind of the same uh, as paint too. Same as paint, yeah. You, never take, you don't actually remove a scratch out of paint. You remove all the paint around the scratch until you level the highest part of the surface of the paint with the lowest depth of the scratch, and it visually disappears. Um, but here's, here's a couple tips. So these are real important. First, if a company that sells a polish also sells a pad, buy the system. And I'm going to tell you this because one of the ways I found out is I tried one company's polish and another company's pad, and when I went to polish on the glass, it actually put scratches in. Now think about it. If the things I have to remove scratches are putting scratches in, and that's all I got, I'm st stuck. Because <laughs> I'm not going to be able to fix the scratches I just put in because the things I bought aren't working. So think about it. If there's a company and they make a glass polish and they also sell a pad to go with it, don't skimp out, buy the system, okay? Because someone else has already figured this stuff out and that's why they're a matching system. Um, so you need the right products. You're also gonna need um, some, some water. Um, every glass polish I've used, and I've used about four or five different brands, is water-based and as it heats up, it dries up and you wanna reliquify it to get some more use out of the braces because they're not completely used up through a few passes. Uh, so you want a little bit of uh, clean water. I put a few drops of, of soap in there uh, just to keep it from evaporating, also to lubricate the surface a little bit. So a little soap always helps. Um, uh, you're also gonna need an interface pad. Okay, so what this is, is it's a foam uh, interface pad that has Velcro hook on one side and Velcro loop on the other side. All right. And this will go between your backing plate and the glass polishing pad. And what this is going to do is if you look at a windshield, even though it looks flat, it's actually got a curve to it. It's going to do two things. It's going to maintain 100% contact between your rayon pad and the glass surface. But it's also going to smooth out the action of the buffing because, uh, for example, all these polishers, they have a backing plate. The backing plate's hard. The pad is thin as hard, and you put that on there, and you got this hard thing spinning around a circle. It's not a comfortable feeling, and again, it's going to take a long time, so you're going to be, if you don't have the interface pad, you're going to have this not a good feeling for a long time, so you really need the interface pad, and, um, and uh, that's an important component of it. Um, besides that, I think uh, pretty much, uh, then you can use any tool. So. A lot of times people ask, you know, what polisher can you use? And pretty much anything that'll spin a pad in a circle or oscillate a pad, it'll work. Rotary buffer, gear-driven polisher, free-spinning polisher, um, pretty much anything. You know, can you do it by hand? Um, you know, maybe if you're the rock, you know, or, you know, but maybe. But he, I think you he, want to be there for a while. He's going to be there for a while, too. Uh, I think he'd rather go wrestle than Paul's glass. Uh, now, so can you, I know that you said about the, um, I know the 3401, is there, can you use it? Yes. All right, I know that you want me to bring something okay, so up about you that. Can, you can use your, dang near any polisher. Now, when it comes to the 3401, you can use it, but the thing is, is that thing comes with a five and a half inch backing plate, and almost all the glass pads I know of on the market are five inches, so the backing plate's too big. But Flex does make a four and seven eighths backing plate. And then you could get this, of course, put the interface pad, center it up, and then put the rayon pad on top of that. So you could use the Flex, but you've got to get the right backing plate. And yes, we sell those at AutoGeek. I point that out because every time I make a post anywhere, someone always says, Mike, where can I get this stuff? <laughs> and I'm just like, do you not know where I work? <laughs> so anyway, so we carry all this stuff. Now, a few years ago, most of the time, by the way, by the, by the way, when I got into glass polishing, this would be about 13 or 14 years ago, back when I was still at Meguiar's, um, everything I ever read about polishing glass said you had to do it with a rotary polisher. Now, I know a lot of people either A, don't own a rotary polisher, or B, maybe they're, they haven't got, you know, worked their way up the tool hierarchy and purchased one yet because they are a little bit more of an advanced tool. So one day I thought to myself, well, what's the difference between a rotary polisher and, say, a porter cable? Well, obviously one is gear driven and only spins a pad in a circle, and one is free spinning and spins it in a circle and oscillates it. But I just thought to myself, well, if you could put that pad on there 
and mark your little backing plate with your felt marker and then maintain pad rotation, isn't it, in a way, doing the same thing? And my little brain said, why, yes it is. So I went out and tried it and it worked just fine. And the reason I did that was because I knew a lot of people didn't own a rotary, but a lot of people owned things like this. And so it opened up the world of glass polishing to anybody with any kind of orbital polisher. And uh, that, that article actually probably dates back about eight years ago. So been doing this a long time and uh, yeah, you can use any tool, you just, you know, the fastest way to do it is gonna be at the rotary, all these other tools will do it, it'll just take a little longer because they're not as powerful. Uh, besides that, Yancey, I guess I'm ready to walk over here and start, and show people how to do this. Okay, now, uh, um, is this something that, I know that time is of the essence of this. Now, it's not something that you're gonna be, hey, I gotta go out in 20 yeah. minutes, you're gonna to wanna to spend Good a question. So, um, so here's how I typically would approach polishing on a windshield, and it's usually the windshield that has the most common scratches in it, and they come from wipers. Especially uh, when they're tinfoiled up. Especially when they're tinfoiled <laughs> up. This is a, a detailing technique, because uh, most people that know me know that, you know, I'm not OCD. Some people think I'm OCD. I'm not OCD, I'm lazy. And at the end of polishing this out, what I don't want to do is take a, you're going to throw splatter, okay? So if you don't cover up the wiper arm, you're going to have to run a toothbrush down all these edges, and it's a real pain in the butt. So find a way to remove them, lift them up, cover them up. And that's why if you look at the car, I've covered this thing completely up. Now, some of you may be going, well, that's just a little bit extreme, isn't it? And I go, if you, if you think that, you've never polished glass because this is not extreme. And I'll tell you, we're probably still gonna get splatter up here. It's that messy. And the thing about that is, is this abrasive polish, this uh, cerium oxide, if you get a bunch of splatter, say, on the hood of someone's car and you go to wipe it off, it'll scratch the paint. So you don't wanna get splatter dots of glass polish all over the car. You wanna cover the car up. Okay, makes sense. One of the techniques I'll share with you through that I've done in the past is I go buy a painter's drop cloth, a plastic, like a two mil, even a one mil uh, painter's drop cloth, and I'll cover the whole car up, affix the plastic, and then cut out the window. The thing I don't like about doing that is, is then you're gonna throw that big chunk of plastic in the garbage, and it's gonna end up, you know, it's just not eco-friendly. Um, these here are the Auto Geek cover-up towels. I use these all the time for covering things up and then I can wash them and reuse them. So every detailer out there should have, you know, half a dozen of these depending on the type of work they do. But they come in real handy. And of course, they also got the uh, Ivan Car Stuff logo on them. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so when I go to polish out a windshield, what I'm gonna do is I wanna divide this up into four quadrants. Usually I will locate the, um, the mirror here, okay? okay? And that's center of the windshield. And then you think of a straight line down there, and then you can either divide it up, no, here's a, here's a section and here's a section, or you can crosshatch it, so here's a section and here's a section, and of course do the same thing. And then you're gonna spend solid buffing time about 30 minutes minimum on just one quadrant. So you divide this up into four sections, 30 minutes. So uh, I timed myself one time, I buffed out the windshield on a Honda Accord that had wiper marks like this. Solid buffing, no getting on my phone, no messing around, two hours. That didn't include any of the setup time. That's just solid buffing. And, so, uh, so it's definitely tough. plan accordingly on this. Yeah, so you just gotta plan accordingly. Okay, so let me take some of the stuff I'm gonna need over there. All right. And um, I got towels, I think I'm good. All right. Now there's, there's, there's another thing that makes a polishing windshields at least more difficult than say side glass or buffing out a car. Um, and here's, here's what that is. In fact, it'd probably be better if I walked over here to show you this. Okay, so when you're buffing out a car, typically you're either buffing out a horizontal panel or a vertical panel. So you'd be if on a horizontal panel like the hood, you're gonna hold the polisher and push down. On a fender or a door, you're gonna hold the polish like this and push in. Look at the curve of a window. The curve of the window is at like a 45 degree angle. So instead of pushing down or in, you're gonna be pushing down at an angle for, for hours. And you're gonna to have to brace yourself and it, you're gonna find it becomes very tiring, okay? It's not an easy thing to do. Cardio. And, and I guess, <laughs> that, again, that's why I say most of the people that have over the, you know, over the last decade that have contacted me and asked me how to polish glass after I share it with them, when I get a follow-up, they say, yeah, I finally gave up. It was really hard. Well, it is. It's difficult to do. If it was easy to do, everyone would be doing it. All right. Now, um, I had a, I think this would be a good place since we're saying how hard it is. How would you charge for this? 
Oh, God, that's a good question because I really don't do this for money. I teach it in all my detailing classes. Um, you know, if you think about detailing, a, a good dollar amount per hour when you have a detailing business to cover your overhead, your expenses, your material, uh, you know, because everything wears out, is, you know, aim for 100 bucks an hour. Right. You know, at the low end, you know, I know guys that do it for 25 and 30 bucks an hour. Say the low end's 50 bucks an hour. So say you got three hours into this at 50, that's uh, 150 bucks. Three hours into this at 100 bucks, that's 300 bucks. You know, so, you know, pick a range in there that matches your services. But I would say that this is not, for most people, something you'd want to add on to your detailing business. You could, but again, remember. It'd be something kind of like a headlight repair, like another feature yeah. that they could add on, not something that you're going to, you know, say, hey, yeah, no. your windshield's bad. Yeah, <laughs> you're not going to add it. You're going to add it. You're gonna, it's going to be an add on. It's going to be upsell. But, but again, if it's someone's, if you got a car, this, this is bad, by the way. This is as bad as I've ever worked yeah, on. Here, let me get up close if, again. If it's this bad, you know, you might just tell the guy, hey, you know, take a hammer and whack it and call Speedy Glass. Um, if this was a classy car, a 1964 GTO, and it's scratched up, again, if you were to pull the windshield out of a 64 GTO, you're going to find rust down in here. And all of a sudden, no one's going to want to put a piece of new window in when there's rust there. So they'll go, hey, I know, let's fix the rust. Well, once you start falling that rust where it goes, pretty soon it's like, okay, let's pull the motor out. Let's take the interior out. Let's pull the body off the frame. Let's restore the car. You've just opened up a huge can of worms. So instead, just polish out the glass. <laughs> and a lot of those people that do the restorations, they'd rather fix the original gla glass than getting a new glass in. And there is some truth to that. And because I do bring a lot of classics down here, um, I, I polish out a lot of scratches in classic cars for guys. Okay, so you see I covered that one up with some tin foil, but this one here, because I need to get it out of my way, I'm just gonna um, pull it, it up. Is that in your way, Yancy? No. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna clean the glass, you know, just to make sure there's no rock or something on there, you know, some debris that could actually scratch it when you start buffing it. So that's just uh, one of my favorite products, the Sonax glass cleaner. I use it for a waterless wash for a prep wash all the time. Now, um, while you're talking about cleaning, would you want to clay this before to get any I, any? Top? I wouldn't. Yeah, it just depends. Like, look, if it's covered with overspray paint, you could. Uh, this isn't covered with overspray paint, so uh, but you, you could. There's nothing against that. But usually, when you're going to take something as aggressive as cerium oxide in a pad on a rotary or any DA, whatever's on there is going to get obliterated. Okay. Just trying to. Okay, I'm going to put a tape line down here because I'm not going to do this whole thing. In fact, um, I was talking to Yancey. I have my big, my last big three-day class of the year is coming up at the end of September, and what we're going to do is we're going to start this this one section. And we're going to leave the rest for my class to finish out. And, uh, and that's because in my detailing class, this is one of the topics I cover. And what I usually do is I get, a, I get a windshield that's this bad, and I set it up in the class, and I let everybody cycle through. So if there's 20 <laughs> people in the class, everybody, 20 people take a turn pretty soon. It's pretty easy. One guy does it, it's a lot of work. 20 people, you know, what, what's the old saying? Hey, Benny. it's, it's Th Tom Sawyer, whitewash my fence, No, man. no, many hands make light work or something. Oh, well, like yeah, you're going. Oh. Okay, so there's my tape line. And you and Yancey, just to make sure you can easily see scratches yes, before Yes, actually, that, the, the far side away from you is where I can really see them really Okay, good. now here's an important tip. We're going to break the rule, but this is, t t take my word for it, you've got to follow this rule. The first time you want to go polish glass, you get all your supplies together. Never start on the driver's side windshield because uh, if something goes wrong and you put your process put scratches in, you don't have anything that fixes it because the things you bought to take them out are putting them in. And this has happened to me. You just made a safety uh, safety a risky a risk situation for the driver. So always start on the passenger side. For us with our lights to capture it on camera. We needed to start here. Otherwise, I always start on the passenger side. But that said, I also have confidence in the things I'm showing you. It's never failed me. You did it me. a couple times. It's never failed me. Okay, so out of all the tools that are there, I'm just I'm gonna go ahead. This is one of my favorite tools. It's the cordless, cordless PE14, because I don't gotta mess with the cord. Um, this is such a handy tool. Last week we did that boat detailing class and I used the cordless rotary to pull sanding marks out of gel coat. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's a five inch backing plate, five inch interface pad. Line that up. Take my CarPro rayon glass pad, line that up. I'm ready to start polishing glass. 
Okay, so this is another thing you want to do is always shake this really well. And does some, that settle? Yeah, it does. You know, the, the abrasives, I think, do settle. I, 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 you know, uh, I always like it when companies put things in a clear bottle so you can see if it did separate out and then you know to shake it. But since you can't know because it's in an opaque bottle, just as a good rule of thumb, shake it up. Now, this is another, uh, in my detailing classes, I teach a lot of things that require or, or use what I call the buddy system, okay? Uh, this is one of those things where it always helps to have a buddy to mist the glass with some water. Um, the reason why is because if, if you don't have a buddy to do this, you're going to be polishing, it's going to dry up on you, so what? You got to turn the polisher off, set it down, grab your bottle, grab some water, mist it on, put the bottle back down, grab your polisher. It's going to take you twice as long. So like if you're going to do this for yourself, get the neighbor, the wife, the girlfriend, the, the son, you know, somebody to sit there and just mist a little. It doesn't take a lot, but it takes a little, but it helps to have a buddy. So is that a hint? That is a hint. Okay, so I, we have a timer. Now let's... I want to buff this for 20 minutes straight. Okay, and I do have a timer I'm going to put on. So as soon as you start, I'm going to hit the timer, then I'll come over and grab the water bottle. Okay, yeah, and, the, and the, usually what I tell people, if they ask me, how long might does it take to do a quadrant? I would say about 30 minutes. So we don't want to bore you to this, but we're going to do a solid 20 minute passes because the scratches in this windshield are so deep, it's going to take that much work to, for you to see a visual difference on camera. Okay, let me, all right, one last time. Oops, your hand's right in the way. One last time, no, 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 drop that. Okay. All right, that is where we're, what we are removing people. Those are the, wiper you doing, marks. which side you doing? I'm gonna do this side right here. Oh, you're doing that side, yeah. okay. So, all right, those are the wiper marks that we're gonna be taking. And I will start the timer. I just wanted to give them a, a good I got an report. idea, how about I miss the water, you run the buffer. How about, uh, we, we can swap. <laughs> we, we, oh, like a tag team like The Rock. Exactly. There you go. All right, here we go. Ready? Go. And timer going. <laughs> Ask me how hard I'm pushing down. Mike, how hard are you pushing down? Really hard. Oh, and now I know why you wanted me on this side, because you're throwing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of messy. Just let me know when. Mi miss me. Okay. If I had to guess, I'd say I'm pushing down about 20 pounds. 20 pounds? Easy okay. of pressure. I'm pushing down hard. Now, do you have to worry about heat? Um, it's not a good idea to get the windshield hot because it has that layer of safety plastic or safety film between the two sheets. Okay. So if you get in an accident, you know, the glass doesn't shatter and get into your eyes. I'm gonna add some more product here okay. too. Um, so, but when you're doing a section this big, when you're buffing here, it's cooling down up here. Okay. When you're buffing here- So you don't want to sit in one spot? No, I don't want to sit in one spot, no. Okay. And I've done that before. Okay. You want to hear a really horror story? That was with your watch on the yeah, Ferrari? So, <laughs> so one time- Oh, wait, I, wait until we're done with that. So that way it's good audio. Okay. Yeah, forget, don't forget to ask me about scratching the Ferrari glass on the inside. I will. Okay, back to pushing hard. And what speed do you have that on? Uh, that's on the four on the flex with the, I think it's about 1500. Okay. I can't tell, I got my contacts in. <laughs> Those things that are supposed to make you be able to see? Not when you're nearsighted. <clears throat> okay, miss me. All right, I'm gonna go check the time real quick. All right, you've only been there for three minutes. Got 17 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna add some, oh, we're good. So I, I, I like to make, you know, three or four good solid passes, add a little water, three or four more good solid passes, then just add more product. Okay. Now you don't have to wipe this off in between? No. You, you wanna leave it so that way whatever's not used up gets used up? Yeah, that, and it would make the job 20 times longer. <laughs> no, yeah. I understand that, I just, yeah. I'm sure yeah. somebody out there might be asking why we're not wiping in between. Nope, just keep on going. You call that your slurry, your glass polished slurry. 
And then just do the same thing with regular section passes overlapping? Yeah, pretty much. Now since these are uh, wiper marks, pits are a little bit different. Would you do the same thing where you just work that one area, let it cool, don't overwork it, then just slowly work that out? Is that how you would handle a pit? Yeah. That's hard. It's <laughs> really hard. I know, it's really hard over here. Yeah. This, this finger of mine, you know. But now you can definitely see why you want to cover stuff up because this does sling. It's not like a foam pad or a wool pad that's grabbing and holding the product in. It's actually slinging some of that stuff out. It's just the nature of the pad. Yeah, probably about another 15 minutes. At 10 minutes, let's wipe off just a little section okay. and look. Okay, don't add any water. Okay. I want to add fresh abrasives. Okay. So that's what I'm adding here is not just product, but it's the abrasives. All right, let me get my, all right, we got six minutes before that. <laughs> So the guy that owns this car, one Saturday he comes down here and he asks me how to do this. So I get everything out, tape off the car, set them all up, show them how to do it. He buffs for like two or three passes and goes, oh my gosh, that's hard. <laughs> and then he stops. <laughs> and I'm done. Now after we're done with this, it's a good idea to, to uh, seal it or coat it, put some sort of thing on there or oh, is it good sure. to go? Yeah, yeah. I'll show uh, my favorite glass coating. All right. Now is this pretty much safe for all types of windshields? I know some they have like a, a coating on the outside. You know, if um, I not, I'm not an expert in that, but that's what I've been learning is that some windshields now come from the factory with a coating to create a hydrophobic surface so the glass stays cleaner longer. Mm. And if you do this to that, you will obliterate the coating. So um, beware of what you're working on is another word. Well, that's where Google comes in handy. <laughs> you know? Google, or Skynet as Mike calls it. Or, yeah, Skynet. Or, um, you know, contact some glass polish company. Someone that actually does this for a living. You know, this is not my core, uh, you know, No, you don't make base. windshields? You don't make automotive glass? Well, first of all, there's, in most cases, most, not all, but there's really no case to be buffing the glass out on a brand new car. No, very true. And that's where that coating would be. So this is a 2002 Toyota you, Camry I have no LE. idea. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a Camry LE, I think. Cam a, Corolla. Corolla, LE. So it's, uh, what, 18 years old? It's not new. Water? Yeah, a little water. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. And also another tip would be also, we have a, 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 a screen, a window screen on the inside that's dark in color, so you can use either, you know, your uh, sunscreen that you have inside or just make sure, or put like a black sheet or something, so that way it kind of lets you see the scratches a little bit easier. Okay, abrasives. Abrasives? No, no just abrasives. All right, I'm checking. There's, you got about three minutes before. There's really yeah. no buildup of anything. That's just the color of the product that's on there. Yeah, we'll, when we're done, we'll show that. Okay. From what I can see right here, seeing not as many. Or any at all. Okay, a little water. Use those forearm muscles. Just look at this way, you don't have to go to the gym tonight. I right, think we got just a couple more minutes. Yep, 
Yeah, you got two minutes till 10 minutes. Water? No, nah, let me grab some you more good? abrasive. All right. Plus it gives my muscle just a brief break there. <laughs> well, this is why people say, oh, I tried it, it was too hard. hard. Well, it is hard. <laughs> like wet sanding. <laughs> yeah. I really want to learn how to wet sand. Do it once. I'm never going to do it again. Now, would you use, you can't use this same system for headlight repair. I, I know the answer, but I'm sure maybe some people out there might be asking about it. No, not really. The, plus, you know what? There's so many headlight repair kits on the market. All right. Did someone prove toothpaste works? <laughs> That's on YouTube, so it's got to be true. <laughs> then there's that new uh, steam one that just steam it, then it goes back. Water. And as you can tell, I'm not putting a ton of water on there, just enough to mist the surface. Okay, how are we doing time-wise? We got about one minute, I do believe. We got 30 seconds. Okay, I mean, one if more you want to wipe right one, now. One more solid pass. One more solid pass. All right, you do that. I'm gonna go man the camera real quick. Okay. Now, remember I said it was messy? Oh, it's, I'm getting that right now. You trying to figure out how to do a smiley face? A nose. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah, I'm not very artistic like you. That is messy, and uh, let's see. Yes, there are splatter dots everywhere Lord. on the roof. So, you know, take my word or don't, but I'm telling you, this is a messy job. And if, if I was going to do this on the car as a detail, I'd do this before I even wash the car. Here, actually, you know okay. let me pause the timer. Now, this is, uh, this is the part about live TV or live video. Uh, video where I'm just like going, oh my gosh, I hope this looks good. <laughs> if not, I, we go back to my old slogan, right? It's not my car. <laughs> From what I can see, it's definitely an improvement. Obviously, there's more work that needs to be done, but it's definitely an improvement. Really? Gosh, from where I'm standing, it looks pretty good. No, I, I can catch a couple of the wiper marks still there, but it's definitely, we'll do that side, and it should be a stark difference between the two. <laughs> or I do the smiley face that scratched the paint or the glass. Or the glass? <laughs> Not really. Okay, hold on here. No, I tell you, that it, it's a, he, where I'm looking is a day and night difference. No, it is. Ugh. It is. I can, like I said, I can still see a few, you know, <laughs> right on the edge. But can you drop that wiper for me? Yeah, hold on. Let me, uh, let me wipe it again. Yeah, one more clean cloth. It's pretty streaky, smeary here. Streaky, smeary. That's technical terms, people. <sighs> You're acting like that's hard work. Getting of that 100% streak free so it shows up on a camera is the challenge. How's that look? Looks good. <sighs> All right, do me a favor, drop the wiper for, oh, yeah. for a second. Okay. All right, 10 minutes of polishing. The left hand side is before. Then let me pan back a little bit. And the right hand side is after. Definitely a big difference. You can tell where you didn't go straight up to the glass, but. Um, oh yeah, huge difference. Huge yeah. difference. But okay, so that's 10 minutes of polishing and I'm pushing 20 minutes hard, but here's the, here's the point. With more time, you just keep working. Yeah, you just you, abrade the glass, keep working the scratches out and uh, you can get it done. It's just time, time, energy, labor. Okay, we still Okay, doing... you wanted to take over this side and I'll be the mister. Oh, you, oh, you or, want me to do it? Or we can just do questions. I mean, I think everybody said it. That's how you take scratches out of glass. So you did... <sighs> Half of what we promised. <laughs> can we can go another 10. We can go another Let's 10. do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. See if we can get her. I'll push a little harder. 
Push a little harder. <clears throat> the people calling me obviously do not know we do live broadcasts at 3 p.m. Oh, well, that's why you have to put it on silent. And this time we'll pull the tape off. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, water. Or it missed me. Yeah, where I can see is right along the tape. Yeah, well. That's because you were going up with the tape You're line. not going to get him where the tape line is because right. there's, a, there's a physical height difference there. No, no, no. I, I understand that. I understand that. I'm gonna go braces. Okay. Whew. Really putting the old PE14 through the paces here. Fresh check battery. my battery level. Wow, down to one bar. I got one behind me over here. Oh, do you? Yeah. Down the cart. Okay, miss me. Now your second pass, is they the same speed as you do work with paint? The only thing that's different is the pressure? Uh, pressure, and I'm trying to move slow, but, um, what happens if you go too slow, it'll dry up where your pad is and it kind of jerks you around. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to go with product again. All right, so. It gives me my muscle just that just little, little bit short of break. break before I start Aww. pushing down again. I'll tell you, this is hard work. I told you, you didn't have to go to the gym today. And, uh, and AC doesn't have to go to the gym. And it's faster with this tool. Any other tool is going to be slower, you know, just less power. True, because you can't really push down, especially like an oscillating, um, a direct orbital one. Well, not a direct orbital, just a regular orbital one. You no, can't you can. press. You, you can press really hard, not as hard as you're pressing. Not as hard. There. Yeah. No. You got to maintain pad rotation. Right. Okay, miss me. So using like a G9 or Porter cable or any other. Uh, Random orbital, spec to add probably another tenth, a quarter of the time to yeah, it. Yeah, about that. Where if you use a, a rotary or a direct uh, 341 or direct drive, it would be about the same? Oh, uh, yeah, probably about the same. All right. Yeah. I'm going to go with braces. Now, what about long throws? What's the advantage of having a long throw? Just so it you know, a little bit more violent of an action going across it? I've only done long throws enough to test to see if they would work, and they work. Um, it could be because of the long stroke. They could actually work faster. Right. You would need somebody that had the inclination, which is not <laughs> me, to get, a, to get a windshield and do fair testing There's comparing that. tools. Your class. Yeah, my class. Pushing really hard. Yeah, I missed me. Now I noticed that you're kind of doing up and down, up and down, then you kind of do a zigzag. Is that just make sure you get equal coverage everywhere or just the way that you're pushing? That's just tired muscles. <laughs> that's, that's getting lazy there. Uh, I think my battery's about to die. You have another battery right there. Oh, it's time for a fresh one. All right, you got five minutes. Dun, 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 dun. Well, look at it this way. Michael will be able to see on his way home 
<laughs> no doubt. Sunrises won't be a big bad thing for them or sunsets. That's when I always noticed when I had wiper marks is when the sun's setting. Yeah, glare. Or at night when the headlights are shining on oh, you. Oh yeah, that's really bad. You know, we should have did a TikTok of this and people would be doing this as a fad. Because you get that funky little thing in there. It'd be like the people putting paint cans on a string and putting it out all across the garage. I'm going to go for a break. Right. Oh. Now I figured out your little pattern here. Um. A couple years ago at um, one of my big three-day classes, uh, we had a gentleman here with a 1968 Camaro uh, Rally Sport. Had a bunch of scratches in the passenger side glass. And my class completely took them out. Now here's the benefit. Sometimes taking the, you know, sometimes just to take those old doors and window frames apart, mm -hmm. real complicated. Don't always seem to go back the right yeah, way. way. <laughs> so, what is this piece? I don't remember this so piece. When you have a perfectly good working window, there's a time, another time you might want to just go ahead and polish it versus replace it. it. Okay, I missed me. You got about less than three minutes left. Remember, we, he was saying around 30 minutes is usual average time. We're doing 20, just so that way this video isn't five miles long. Um, or five hours. <laughs> I'll go miles. Okay, polish. I'm going to get polished. Right. Uh, but no, the, so you are going to be spending a lot of time doing this. It's, you know... It's not I'm, a, a quick. I'm process. happy just to finally show it. I've been wanting to do this for years, and it's once people see how it's done, a they know how it's done, b now they know what they're getting into. Too. Exactly. Yeah. But the results can be very rewarding. So we're not trying to talk you out of it. If you have it and you want to tackle it, just let you know that there is obviously a mess and time frame. You gonna need any more water? Nah, I think we're yeah. good. I'm gonna go ahead and head back over. You got one minute. Okay, I'm done. You're done? <laughs> I'm done. All right, well, you have 20, 25 seconds left. Oh, All that'll, right. be, that'll include your wiping. Okay, so kind of like paint polishing, um, when you buff out a swirled out panel on a car, after you say do eight section passes and wipe off, all the shallow ones are gone, usually. What's left behind? The, the random. Rids. Rids. Random, isolated, isolated, deeper scratches. So now as I wipe this mess off here, <laughs> and we look at it, we're going to see probably most of them are gone. Some still remain. The ones that remain, what are those? Hold on. Deeper. 
They're the I'm, deep I'm going between all my screens here real quick. Um, here's a good question. I think that is kind of relevant to what's going on right now. Uh, oh, we're, uh, no, 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 I just can't bring it in. Why can I not bring you in? All right, well, anyway, somebody asked on Facebook, oh, no, on YouTube, have you ever tried 5,000 Trizac to help give you a head start on glass polishing? Yes, I have. I did not want to show that as my first glass polishing video on camera like this just because um, you give someone an inch, they take a mile. I mean, someone could take and get themselves into a real dangerous situation if they were to sand. Oh, yeah, I've machine sanded. You can take Trizac and machine sand glass, and it will flatten it out, but you better damn sure make certain you've got a system to pull those scratches out right because it's one thing to uh, take you know a windshield that has some scratches and buff with something like this and maybe make an improvement but you're no worse off than you were when you started if you start right in with sanding discs like the Trizac you're gonna fog that glass over instantly and if you if you stop you're screwed yeah you so, can't drive it <laughs> you, you can't drive it so you know, there's a huge difference in them. But yeah, Trizac uh, 3000, 5000, uh, probably even the 8000, you can uh, machine sand glass and uh, level it that way and pull it out. In fact, I had an Audi R10 down here that we did this to. I think that looks pretty street free. Oh, I, I just remembered. Uh, you, tell me about your. your oh, thing. the Ferrari. Oh, drop the wiper arm for me, too, yeah, would you? The Ferrari. Okay, so. While you're doing that, I'm going to get some close ups of this stuff, so. Because I can see it from here. Wait Is that good? No, oh, that's awesome. And it, okay, so one time this guy hired me to left buff side. out a 1987. Hold on. The left side, people, is the before. The right side mm. is after. That is 20 minutes worth of sanding or polishing. So that is what you can do. Yeah, you can see the deeper ones, you know, some random ones in there. But the longer you work on it, the, more, the better results that you'll get. All right, so sorry, Mike, didn't mean to cut you off. Okay, so one time this guy uh, had me buff out a 1987 uh, Ferrari GT something. And uh, yeah, I'm out of clean towels here. Um, so, you know, I uh, buffed out the outside. That was my job. I'm all done. I want to get my beauty shots. Here it is, all beautiful. Sign up on the camera. I look at the car. There's some smudges on the inside of the glass. They're just absolutely ruining my beauty shots. Someone's gonna look at the beautiful paint I polished. They're gonna go, look at those smudges. So I'm thinking, well, not really the best glass cleaner guy in the world, but I jump inside the fire, some glass cleaner, a couple towels, and I start wiping the glass. And my wife had just bought me a brand new watch, and it had you know, <laughs> the chain, the, the, the steel band on it, which being brand new, the edges were very sharp. And as I'm making a wipe, uh, here's the lesson, always take your watch off. <laughs> uh, as I'm making a wipe, I see this one, this one smear that just won't come off. And it, it wasn't a smear, it was a scratch I put in. So I, I came back here to the shop, Auto Geek, and I had just enough of this experimental glass polish some company sent me, and that's all I had. I didn't, this wasn't even invented then, so it wasn't on the market. I, had, I took and I cut down a little tiny pad out of one of these, and I got a little tiny little flat backing plate and it was all I could do to get this in between the steering wheel and the windshield and then work that scratch and I would make about 10 passes stop and put my hand on it to see how hot it was it's hot let it cool down buff 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 put my hand on it let it cool down feel it, make sure I was feeling it to make sure it cooled down before I buffed again and I, I don't know if I, it's been so long since this happened I'd say I probably spent at least an hour taking a tiny little scratch out uh, because it was right there where the owner was going to look. I couldn't <laughs> could, like go, oh, yeah. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, always take your jewelry off before you work on a car, which I'm guilty of. I usually got to wear my watch when I do video work or detail cars, but I see a lot of other people that wear rings. Look, I got no rings on, so. Any questions? Oh, we got, I didn't know if you were done or not. Do you want to hang out there for the that, question? Does or? that look good? No, it does. Yeah. I mean, from right here, I can see so, uh, the straight line going down. Straight line, down. okay. And, so, and again, here's the point. Anything I didn't get out of 20 minutes of pressing hard with the rotary, uh, I could get out just by buffing more or making Yancey come buff more. Uh, but that's what I told people. I go, usually if you divide the windshield into four squares, four quadrants, and spend 30 minutes on one quadrant, you'll get it to where I see it. It is here now. 
So, but it's a, it's a lot of work. And again, you know, again, I've been, do, I've been teaching this for years and so many people say, well, I tried that, it was really hard, I quit. I get it, it's really hard, people quit. I don't quit. But nothing in life is, that's worth it is, is easy, so come on. I don't quit, I get the job done. Atta boy. <laughs> All right, with that being said, let's move right on to question and answer time with yours truly, Mike Phillips. You ask, we answer. All right, here we go. Let's go back to the very beginning here. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see here. How? All right, here's a good one. Allen, uh, any tips for small rock chips in glass? Uh, it's called rock chip repair guy. You know, it's, again, you got you to gotta understand that you're, you, you don't remove the chip. You level all the glass around it until you level the surface to the lowest depth of the chip. And if you got something that your fingernail drags into or an ink pen would go into, that's pretty deep when you're talking about glass. And first of all, if you were to just stand in that area, you would create a visual distortion. You know, glass polishing should really be done over a wide surface area so you don't distort the glass by making different levels on it. Uh, no, rock chip, you know, I've removed pits, okay? So tiny pits, tiny pits. But rock chips, nah, just get, replace the glass or have someone come fill it. Yeah, it's like a, a serum it's, that it's they put resin, in. It's a resin, yeah. it's some sort of epoxy resin or something. Okay, let's go this one a little bit off topic. Any tips for polishing clear coated plastic panels on a BMW i3S? Brought it to a detailer, he marred the alivet and microfiber pad and compound. He knocked it down some with polishing, but not enough. And what is the, where is the surface located? It's uh, polishing clear coated plastic panels. Clear coat, well, you cheated just like clear coat if it's clear coated. Yeah, if it's clear coated, just, can yeah. you just step down to another, well, keep we, polishing. We had a couple Corvettes here that had carbon fiber roof panels, but there's clear coat over the carbon fiber, so we treated it just like we treated the hood paint. Um, I, if, if it's not looking good, then I'd take a look at the abrasive technology you're working with. What brand are you using? There's, Do you have rocks in a bottle? There's good stuff <laughs> and there's crap on the market. You know, anybody that's taken a class with me, watched anything I've shot in video or read any of my articles know that the two words I talk about the most are abrasive technology. There's good stuff and there's bad stuff. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen someone say, hey, I'm having a hard time polishing the car, the paint out of my car. I'm removing the swirls and scratches, but it looks funny. And the reason it looks funny is because the stuff they're using is cheap and it's micro marring the paint and it's, that's, you're making the clear coat less clear. So you, you might remove the swirls and scratches, but now you got micro marring. And it all comes down to abrasive technology. Okay. So. All right, now here's, this is kind of a, going to be a two-part one, um, but they, it goes along with, with each other. Uh, how long do those pads last between uses, and how do you clean those pads? I've actually thrown them in the wash machine. Have you? <laughs> yeah, because I'm lazy. Here, let me, let me uh, zoom in since we're I, on I, those. I will show you the part that wears out. The, the Velcro? Yeah, the interface. Well, could, could you people in the viewing audience see how hard I was pushing down? Yeah, I, I was in I, mean, I was on pushing that. down. And so what happens is you generate a lot of heat. And so then ask yourself, is heat gonna make the interface pad last longer or last less long? <laughs> less, and, uh, long? less long? Less <laughs> long. So uh, this one's still in good shape, but you know, usually um, it, it just, everything, you know, heat and pressure are gonna take its toll. Here, but, let, me, let me see that. Yeah, there's, there's nothing wrong with these so far. You no, can show get, me the, the face of it, so that way you can see, no, the other side. That's what it looks like. That's yeah. just spent product and a little bit of glass. Yeah, and spent stuff. some glass on there. But what I've done is I've just taken and um, only washed these by themselves. Okay, I would throw these in here with microfiber towels. But I just throw them in the washing machine and, you know, I figure if they come out, I use them. If they don't, I'll buy some more. So, okay. But they always come out. All right. Uh, let's you got to understand, I throw everything in the washing machine. <laughs> I, th I throw my cyclo brushes, my wheel brushes, pretty much everything that goes in the washing machine. It doesn't always go in the dryer, but it does go in the washer. Okay. Are all glass manufacturers the same? PPPGE? I, I don't know. Don't know? I, a, a We're not, we, we don't make them. So. Yeah, I'm not a glass expert. I'm, I'm, people know me as a paint polishing guy, but this is something that I've done a lot of. Okay, uh, here's another one. Uh, can you use detailing spray? I take it you're trying to say that for the misting part instead of water? Oh yeah, you could. You could use anything. Spit would work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, directly Moisture, liquid. Uh, so for me, okay. my answer is whatever's closest to my hand. You okay. know, if there's a water that's washed and it's right here, I'll grab it before I walk 20 feet to grab water. Okay. So. All right, here's another one. Marcos, uh, hi from Portugal. Hey. Uh, I use Sarah glass and a rayon pad, but directly attached to the backing plate. I've marred the glass. Was it because I didn't use an interface? 
Eh, you know, it, it could be. Um, it, it shouldn't have been. You know, I would look to see if something was dirty first. Uh, but I'll tell you, the interface pad, you probably found out, is very hard. Very, it was a very unpleasant feel to run a hard pad and a hard backing plate over a hard surface. You need to get something in there where there's some cushion that'll smooth the whole operation out. It could be, but I, I, I wouldn't think that, though. Okay. But here's the question. Did you start on the driver's side or the passenger side? <laughs> well, if only he could talk to me. During, yeah. um, let's see here. Let's go to Nick. Does the Flex XCE108 have the same backing plate as the 3401? Is that the new Flex, the Super Beast? It might be. See, see, people go by the part numbers. I give them nicknames. There's the Super Beast, the Beast, and the C Beast, the Cordless Beast. The Super Beast is the new version of the 34-on with the plastic housing. Um, and and, and uh, tool companies, uh, if you're watching this, don't, don't market your tools with part numbers. It, it doesn't work, you know. Look what Rupes did, Bigfoot, okay? The Boss, the Boss, you know, Boss 15, Boss 21. Give, pick a cool name for your tool. Um, <laughs> if, but the answer is no. The, the back, the, I had to think about that for a second. Here, I can show you. The, the only backing plates that fit the 3401, they're very unique, and they only fit the 3401. All right, hold on. This is solid. The gears you see there isn't something that comes off this backing plate, and these will not fit onto any of the new Flex tools, the finisher or what I call the Supa, the Supa Beast. Okay. All right, go ahead and hang out over there so that way I'm not sure. swinging people all over the place. Well, I'm going to go even better. I'm going to walk over here and grab my Super Beast. Oh, well, there you go. All right, while you're doing that, I'm going to bring up another question. Where is my Super Beast? We have Chad Atkins here. Should you also make sure no chips impacts on the glass before starting so heat from the machine will not stress the glass and possibly spread? Uh, that, that's probably a good idea. You know, um, well, I guess for me, I, I can't actually remember ever... Um, working on any glass that had a, a chip in it big enough for me to notice. But yeah, if you're pushing down hard with the tool um, and there's a rock chip in the glass and it's not filled already with that resin that they use and there's a good chance pushing on it and heating it up is gonna not going to make it smaller. <laughs> well, if you've ever been like out in, in a What's, cold yeah, area yeah. and you have a crack in there, you hit your, your heater, your defroster first time in the, in the winter, then you just watch it as it grow. What's the opposite of smaller? <laughs> okay, so here's the beast. In case you guys don't know, this thing's nickname is called the beast. And you can tell the beast by the aluminum head. It's gear-driven 8 millimeter aluminum head. And then this is the Supa, right, the Supa on. beast. It's right. missing the R on the end of Super. That's its name, Supa. Turn Super it Beast. On its side. And it's got the plastic head. It's also eight millimeter gear driven. And the backing plate this uses and this backing plate that goes with the flex are completely different. So no, they will not work. The good news is, is this ships with a five inch backing plate. So you can use it with the factory backing plate. In fact, I'll show you, I'll show you that. Um, I only, I, br I, I turn and churn the large one on mine because it's got enough power to do so. Where is the beast, the sea beast? Uh, I don't know. Well, I'm going to go ahead and okay. answer you... this one real quick. Sure. What is the purpose of this? Well, Roberto, <laughs> that is the purpose. He must have come in late. Yeah, you, you came in late. It's came just in late. to remove I don't know safety. Where it, actually, oh. that's the big thing on this is safety. You want... Well, there's all kinds of reasons to get scratched out of glass. Why do well, we polish? safety, you're seeing through it. If why, you do we polish, through it. <laughs> why do we polish paint? Where do my CBs go? Uh, I have no idea. Um, just go ahead and go back over there. Uh, if you buy this stuff. You put it up here. Okay. And then here is the sea beast. Again, Oops, hold on. I mean, gear driven. Here. It's just the cordless version. Uh, can you get the word there? I'm getting there. All right. Okay, so the three different eight millimeter gear driven tools from Flex, the Beast, the Super Beast, the Sea Beast, and this, this, the, the, the new one, this one, comes with that size backing plate. If you ever buy one of these, I recommend you get the big one because it's got the power to turn and turn big pads. You might as well put it to use. Make All right. sense? Yep. All right, here, Matt, you must have uh, tuned in a little bit late. What are you using? You missed the start. Um, you just want to know what the compound was, and sure. it's this, the Siri glass. Let me get right up in there. Focus. That is what we use, basically. We use the glass cleaner to clean. We use Siri glass as the compound. Then what are those pads? Uh, they're called the glass polishing pads. They're Ray, CarPro 
Rayon, glass polish. Then Griot's pads. has some. And Griot's, but, but and Lake Country has some. Yeah, but I, I again, here's the most important thing I've learned from experience. You, yeah, you want to buy. You, you if, if someone makes a polish and they make a pad, you want to buy them together. Okay. Okay. No, that's okay. That's fine. I. Yeah. All right. Um, the, the reason I'll point this out is because Griot's makes a glass polish, but it doesn't contain cerium oxide. So it's not for removing swirls and scratches, it's for removing water spots and film. Okay. Thank you. Uh, what speed is Mike using? I think that we answered that. It was on four. It was on four. That was on the rotary. If you're on, uh, say, the G9, you'd have it on a five or a six. I can't, I can't read that. I think it's like 1,400. Uh, oh, yeah, I'd be maxed out. On any of the free spinning mm -hmm. tools, I'd be maxed out. All right, what out. about the 3401? 34, I'm maxed out. Maxed out? Six, Okay. Yeah. All right. So, you know, sometimes there's something to be said for speed. You know, making the tool go as fast as it will go helps you to go as fast as you can go. There's something to be said for speed. Okay. Um, the question that we asked earlier about the BMW. Yes. Uh, that he used optimum black pad with hyper polish. Okay. Be uh, eco friendly, clear coat, extremely soft. Aditha doesn't know anything else but the optimum system. Yeah, optimum makes good stuff, but you yeah. might have to step outside that line and uh, grab something. Uh, you know, um, Menzerna uh, makes products that are that just was the foolproof for soft paint. Enster, that, that's the guy's name, Enster. So I'm talking to you directly, yeah. Enster. Hold on, let me bring you up so that you're not a voice from the nether. Um, was the black pad the microfiber pad or was it a foam pad? That's the only thing that I'm not clear on. So yeah. post that in there and then I'll get back with you. Um, all right, here, let's go to here. Remember, we're going to put a coating on here too. <laughs> uh, this one's funny. Unfair to Mike, they didn't switch. <laughs> Would it go faster with a rotary and a larger pad? That's the largest pad that they make, is it not? Yeah, uh, well, available to us are five inches, five inch glass pads. Yeah. So we are using the largest pad that we could. Yeah. Uh, to tell you the truth, if you had a bigger pad, you'd take uh, the rock. You know, take more muscle. It's more muscle. Yeah, it'd take a heck of a lot more muscle. Uh, small pads are kind of nice on rotary, by the way. Uh, when I teach my rotary class at my detailing classes, I start the students out with uh, five inch foam pads and then bump them up to eight inch wool pads. But they start out small. You got to walk before, before you, you can, can run. run. And yes, Nicole, I'm not doing TikTok. I just thought that was funny. That was a bad joke. Obviously, it sank like a lead balloon. Uh, product to the link for the window scratches. Yes, uh, Andy uh, and anybody else that's watching this, if you're watching this on YouTube or on Facebook, all the products are listed in the description. Uh, then also you can go to AutoGeek and on, there's a link there also that I posted in both of the comments where you can go there and for a week it'll be up of all the products that we use here. Uh, or you just go to the, actually, I can tell them how to get there. You can go to AutoGeek, I mean, AutoGeek.com. You'll see a front page ad that shows up with tune in Mike's live classes. Click that and it'll take you straight to the page. Uh, is it okay? So you do, you do something in your I do do something. Is it necessary to use the interface pad? I think we've covered that. Yeah. Yes, it allows the pad you to flex. You said do do. I say do, do, do. You said you do. I do do something. I do do something. Ah, <laughs> I see what you did there. You know, you don't have to use the interface pad, but it's going to, whatever tool you're using. It'll make it so, easy. So if nicer. you got here late, okay, so look at the backing plate. It's hard. The pad is thin and hard. The glass is hard. So you got three hard things, and it's not going to be a smooth action for you and your muscles to work for hours. So you put the foam interface pad on there, and it, it just smooths it out. You know, same thing when your machine's sanding. You know, it, uh, they have an interface pad or a foam back sanding disc smooths out the action of the tool. Okay. Uh, let's go here. Sean. We really need everybody to tune in at three. <laughs> well, yeah. we don't I can't repeat help stuff. it. I can't help it. Uh, hey, I'm just glad that they tuned in. Not, Me too. I love you all for being here. Me too. Okay, same process on the side windows, like a foggy Dodge truck windows? Yep, same process. Same process. All right. Uh, happy here from India. Okay, let's go here. Harish. I think I said your name right. I really wanted to try it. Piwanya. Okay, I'm stopping now. Uh, happy here from India. How do we know when it's time to add more abrasive? Is it is it so not? Was well, it was not so clear while Mike was polishing? Yeah, Sorry. there's there's no 
I, don't, I know of no Can system. Can you feel it? Or? Not really. Now, what I do is, is, is I know that the abrasives are hard, so they're not like breaking down. So what I want, all I'm trying to do is just get the most bang for my buck. So I'll, I'll tend to do like three to four section passes and then mist on water because it'll be dry. Three to more section passes, add product. Three to four section passes, add water. Three to four section passes, so add So basically product. it's just familiarity with yeah, the product. Yeah, it's a formula that's worked for me for, uh, you know, 11 years now. And I think this next question is awesome, absolutely uh, awesome question. Okay. And obviously he's been watching some of our other videos, so. Hector Zapata! <laughs> yes, I said it's Zapata. Is there such a thing as a test spot for glass polishing, or just start on the passenger side out of the driver's view. Well, um, th that's a good that's a good point. Starting out on the passenger side is your test spot. Okay, if you got to the point where you've bought all this stuff and you got a glass in front of you that don't look good, you know your test spot is on the passenger side. That or you know, don't buy anything and don't do anything. At some point, you got to jump in the water. Now, you could do something like go to the wrecking yard and get a piece of glass out of the wrecking yard, salvage yard, and test it on something else. To learn or, on. Or you, you know, to learn, or you could use the back window or a side window or, you know, just some old plate glass from a house. So you could go that far. But, you know, the things I've shown you here, the brands, the tools, the techniques, I've never had it not work for me. The, the, my big thing is, is if a company that makes the polish also makes the pad, buy the two together. You start mixing and matching things and you, you, will, you can run into problems. And when you run into problems, again, now think about it. It's the, harder to fix with class. Well, if the <laughs> things you have to remove scratches aren't removing them, they're putting them in, you don't have anything else. So now you're stuck, you don't have everything. So stick within a system. It's called okay. synergistic chemical compatibility. All right, that makes totally perfect sense. Okay, we have two Oh, you oh you talked it on both Facebook and man you he, this guy's <laughs> double tuning in he's on both Facebook and YouTube and Auto Geek our sponsor we carry all this stuff so it's really easy to get it all I, and, and it brings it right here hello from the Netherlands <laughs> Goose Burkoff uh, do you have international shipping yes we do it all just comes down we'll they, you'll place your order then they'll the international shipping department will get a hold of you and tell you how much the shipping will be yeah. so that is yes we do ship internationally. Okay, here, this, I'm gonna segue from this one right into your next demo right here. There, okay. I'm still gonna do some more uh, questions, but this next question segues right into what you're about ready to do. So, and on with it. Alex, can you use ceramic coating on glass? You know, um, I, you know, I'm not, there's so many ceramic coatings on the market. Here's my joke, okay, and it's not really very good, but I'll do it for you, okay? In the amount of time it takes me to turn in a circle, there's another ceramic coating on the market. That's the first time I've seen that joke. <laughs> okay, okay, that's, I mean, that's everybody bad. and their brother's bringing out a ceramic coating to try to cash in and make big bucks from an unknowing, unwashed masses. Okay, so um, here's what I know about ceramic coatings is A, prep work, B, uh, bonding. So um, what I do is I try to trust the chemist. If the chemist, you know, pick a brand you trust, and if the chemist says you can use this on blank, then I like to just trust the chemist that I can actually use it on the thing he says I can use it for. Other than that, you're guessing unless you can get a hold of the chemist. Now, sometimes we can. Last week we used a coating that is marketed for boats on, or for cars on urethane paint on gel coat, which is polyester, but I contacted the chemist and he said, yes, Mike, you can do that. So, you know, it depends on how deep you want to dive. What I want to show you here is my favorite glass coating. Um, now that we've... Uh, um, let me zoom in on it. Now that we've... Uh, now that we've... I've, I think I need to get you new contacts because you stare. <laughs> well, the labels are very sa same. Right. Um, okay, so we polished this. I wiped it off with glass cleaner and a microfiber towel. So theoretically, there's no residue on here. But just as a normal protocol, you want to use a panel wipe. The other one. This is a panel wipe, diamond surface prep spray. You could use IPA, I guess, but you want to make sure that there's no residual oils left from this on there to interfere with the bonding of the coating. And plus you're doing the job, you might as well do it right. Okay, clean microfiber towel. Now, when it comes to glass coatings, you know, and I may, I don't, I don't mean to ruffle any feathers, um, but you know, I've been driving long enough to know that um, when these things rub across the glass over and over again, 
it micro abrades off whatever you put on there. I come from the days of when the only thing on the market was called Rainex. Rainex. And you put Rainex on your window, and water just flies off. But as you use, you know, as you wipe, your wipers go over the glass, it slowly wears off, so you put some more on. So I'm not a big fan of the companies that market products that last for multiple, multiple years because I just think instead of trying to find something that'll last for years, find something you like and use it often. You know it's gonna wear off, so just put some more on. It's not that hard. So I cleaned it, and then this is a product that I like for paint and glass. It's called Diamond Surface Coating. Uh, hold it right there. Okay, so now here's why I like it. Most coatings on the market, and all you guys that install them will agree with me, they make the paint feel rubbery. Okay, and what that means is, you take a clean towel and try to wipe your paint and the rag sticks and your hand moves away because it's, it's rubbery, the finish is rubbery. This leaves the paint feeling slippery, almost like a paint cylinder or wax. So I like it for that reason because I like my car paint to feel slippery, not rubbery. But it also works great on the glass. But the thing is, is it doesn't last for a year. If you use your wipers all the time like we do in Florida, I already know that, so I'm not disappointed. I just put it on every time I wash my car. I missed a little bit on. And let me show you my little technique for this. Here's your basic little wax applicator pad, right? So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take and put my hand on here like this, and I'm gonna take and, I'm just gonna draw my fingers right here. Does anybody know why I'm doing that? Because you're going back to kindergarten and making a turkey? No. So now I know where my fingers go, they go here. <laughs> if I drop this on the ground, and it lands the right side up, I'm co completely well. comfortable with picking that up and using this, the, the side that I'm putting the coating on because there's no dirt on it because it landed on that side. And also when I go to use my expensive coating, if I didn't know from this drawing on the back of this, I wouldn't know where to put it on here. And I don't want to just put it everywhere. I want to put it just where my fingers are going to be. So that's why I put that little drawing on there. And if you read enough of my articles, you see me doing this kind of stuff all the time. It's my own techniques, but maybe it'll help you. Well, so, that's what we're here for, your So techniques. now I put a little bit on the end where my fingertips are going to go. I put some on here. Then just spread it around, just like any other coating. There's no magic to it. You can make a cross hatch, or you can make a circle, or you can draw your name if you want to, but just get the stuff on there. And I tell you, this stuff, it just, it works really good. If it didn't, I wouldn't tell you that. But it does wear off. It does, it's, it's gonna wear it, off. It, it, I, I, that's one thing I hate is, because I use the same product too, and down here, you know, when it's raining, they're just like, okay, this is nice, water's going off, but as soon as I hit the wipers for the first time, I'm like, ah, now I know that it's on a downhill swing. Well, what I don't like is when people sell me something and try to blow smoke and tell me it's gonna last forever when I know it's not, because this piece of rubber is gonna rub over and over it again. Yep. It's gonna wear it off. It just happens. So find something you like, learn and to use, use it, it often. often. All right, now let's go back to the questions and answers. Let's go here. Where do you keep the pads after used? Well, we kind of answered that. I'm going to throw them in the wash machine, and then I'm going to store them back over there in the pad cabinet. All right. Here's <coughs> another one that's kind of more tool related. How's the cordless flex rotary power compared to the regular DeWalt or Makita rotary? Oh, the, the, uh, it's good. Um, I, here's, you want to know something interesting since you asked a question? When I teach my well, big, I didn't. He actually did. When I teach my big 3D, three day classes, um, like this one that's coming up, I've got 15 to 16 cars coming in. I got two street rods, they're gonna wet sand and they're gonna learn to use the rotary buffer on. And over there on that table, can you scan that table over there? See all the tools? Hold on. That's only a portion. That's only a portion of the tools. Yeah, the rest of them are all in boxes. The, no, the other ones are all great against the wall over there. Oh, in the carts, yes. Okay, that's so right. I'm gonna put out all the, I got about 15 of these. I'm gonna put all these out and then I'm gonna put out the DeWalt's and the Makita's and I got three M's. Guess which ones get grabbed first? The cordless. These. They always go first. And all the people that don't get one, they're like, oh God, I gotta use a DeWalt. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, <laughs> I gotta use have a DeWalt. A cord. You know, so I mean, everybody can make up their own mind what's best, but I, I just demonstrated this last week. I, I took a wool pad, a six and a half inch wool pad, pulling sandy marks out of gel coat. The thing is, is you, you come with two batteries, keep the other battery charged up when it's 
when that one runs out, slap Not the other the one in, throw that in the charger. But the, the wallets, all those other ones are good, but they're what are called full size. This is called compact lightweight. Also, just so you know, the gears in here are stainless steel and they're machined. The gears in all the full size ones are stamped and they're steel and they growl. And that's why when you turn up speed, you gotta put some earplugs in. With this one here, you can turn this on, turn the stereo on and buff all day long because it's quiet, but it also costs twice as much. But it's a quality tool. It's kind of like one of those things in life. You get what you pay for. Somebody needs to make a meme out of your little growl, growl <laughs> face right there. I caught it out of the corner of my eye on screen. Oh, that was hilarious. Yeah. All right, here, let's go back to questions. What causes water spots on windows? Okay, so uh, I have an article. Go to Google and type this in. What's in the water, Mike Phillips? And I have answered the question about what causes water spots on paint or glass forever. And when, what people do is they focus on the spots, the spots on the, on the glass or say the spots on the paint. And what I do is I put their focus back on what the hell is in the water? Okay, <laughs> what is in there that is so corrosive that it's etching urethane paint or it's bonding and staining hard glass? So um, I, I don't know, but I know that like some people like when I used to live in Irvine, that's a very a traffic intense industrial area. Lots of road pollution, lots of brake dust, uh, exhaust fumes, all mixes up, gets in the rain, lands on your car. Um, there's acid rain, you know there's alkaline rain. If you're in, out in Southern California where there are all the forest fires right now, that ash in the smoke mixes with moisture and dew or rain and lands in your car and leaves an alkaline spot. So it, uh, it, there's all kinds of things. There's iron in the water. There's all kinds of dissolved minerals in the water. So when the water sprinkler hits your car, hits the windshield and it dries and all the solids remain behind, it's just a potpourri mix. I mean, it's just all kinds of stuff. Okay. What's more important is to not try to figure out what it is, but how to get it off. Okay, all right, moving right along. We got some more questions. Good We're question, a little though. bit long. All right, uh, will Sari Glass mark stain plastic? Good question. Um, well, the abrasives will abrade plastic or scratch it. But I mean, like if, if you're doing like a compound house, some will turn the, no, the white. No, but here's the deal. Like this right here, there's a, there's a plastic. Look, here's a plastic uh, rear view mirror. Okay, I covered it up. See? If I had not covered <laughs> it up. Is that what that is? <laughs> is that your magic trick? <laughs> If I had not covered it up and it got splattered everywhere and I took a little cloth and wiped it, that would have probably scratched it. It wouldn't have been Surrey Glass's fault. It would have been my fault for not covering it up. So would it be, let, let's just go there. All right, so say. Let's go there. Let's go there. <laughs> so say you didn't do this. You didn't cover the car up like we, uh, you guys see there. And you have splatter marks all over. Yeah. Would it be best just to come back in and wash oh, for the sure. car instead yeah. of trying to wipe it off? Yeah, no, I would get a foam gun out or a foam And just can try to encapsulate lock that the stuff and get water it. water and rinse it really good, blast it off. And you could probably do a pretty good, safe job. But here's the, the deal. Let's, let's take it even further. If, if I'm polishing the glass, I'm probably also probably detailing the car. So then I wouldn't care... You know, I would, if I'm going to polish the glass and then wash the car, if I would have scratched the glass because I got polish splatter on there and run to wash it over, I wouldn't really care because when I'm done with that, I'm going to bring it inside and buff it out. Okay. See, so that's why in my detailing classes, what I teach the order to detail a car. And the first thing you do is engine detailing, uh, glass polishing, and headlight correction because those are the three things that get the outside of the car messy. So why would you want to wash the car first and then get it messy? That's walking backwards in the process. I teach guys to always walk forward in the process. Everything you should do should be making the car look better, cleaner, more detailed, never going backwards. Okay. All right. That works. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's go this. Shelf life. Sometimes I'm just so serious. I know he is. Uh, shelf life of Carpo Ceramax. Um, I have no idea. No idea. Keep it in a cool place in the house. Yeah, know. don't set it in the sun and... Keep it next to the Kraken. All right, let's go here. This is nice. Lewis, cheers from Guadalma. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> uh, thanks a lot, Deb. Ba -ba -ba -ba. All right, oh, good question. Could you use this on quartz, quartz countertop, ceramic coating on countertop, or would it have a bad because of water spots? Um, I don't know the answer to that question. I, I answered it kind of earlier. I would find a, a product that where the chemist said it's made for that surface okay. and then use it because otherwise you're just guessing unless you can contact the chemist. Okay. All right. Chandler always wondered where can one find the shelf between the two cabinets? Those are Craftsman 
uh, cabinets, and the shelf is Craftsman also, so probably at a Home Depot Sears. or low. No, Sears yeah. is out of business. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Lowe's, I think, Lowe's. Picked, up, picked up. Lowe's, yes. Uh, if not, you can go online. It's uh, Craftsman. I'll uh, say these. I'll say <laughs> We've had them for a couple of years. Uh, these have been here since 2010. This has been here for a while. Why pads disintegrate? They need to keep in cool temperatures. Yeah, well, Full everything pads. wears out, even you and me. Yeah. Uh, drive your car, it wears out. Your tires wear out. The motor oil wears out. Everything wears out if you use it. If you don't use it, it'll last forever. All right, let's go here. Do you have an engine detailing as a topic coming up for live? I um, think we did a video. Yeah. Did we do it live? We one? have a really good one that we filmed, but we said we were going to make two new ones. Uh, one was going to be, well, we did cosmetic, but yeah, wet we, wash. Yeah we, yeah, we have a cosmetic one, so go in. If you're, you are on YouTube, so if you go into the live detailing classes playlist, Go down, you'll see a cosmetic one there, but we will do a water. We'll do a wet wash. It's called wet, wet wash, wash engine detailing. All right. That's when you use uh, running water, so sprayers, uh, pressure washers, and degreasers, engine degreasers, and brushes. And brushes. And all kinds of other cool stuff. Okay. And then there's my secret technique. Oh, you have a secret. It's really corny. Okay, and this will be the last question. Let me go ahead and get me out of there. And we did cover this before, and it, actually, Mike, if you want to walk over to the other side, sure. because this answers that question. Okay, which tool can you use? Yes. Okay, so they apparently got in late on the video feed. Yes, that's why. I'm okay, so back. you can use any tool you want to, okay? Here's the, and there, this is a Rupes Bigfoot 21 Mark III, or 15 Mark III. This is a Griot's Garage G9. Here's the lowly Porter cable. All lowly. these will work. Okay, here's the difference. More power, more speed. Faster. Okay? So gear driven will try, as far as I know, I hate to make a Blake a statement like that because long strokes do have an amazing cutting ability, especially on flat surfaces like this. So it could be like a 21 millimeter long stroke free spinning orbital, random orbital posture would outcut a rotary, maybe. But the thing about a rotary, because it's gear driven, you can push down hard like I was showing in this video. And, and there's something to be said for pushing the abrasives into the glass, causing them to take little bites out to abrade it, and that's how you remove strills and scratches, is you level the surface. But any tool, in fact, we were joking around earlier, if you're the rock, you know, the wrestler. I am. You could do it by hand. It's just not gonna, it's gonna take a long time, so. All right. No, I thought that worked out. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, oh, a little story about that. You see the little happy face here? When we first started out uh, videoing, we always had to put these around there so that way people knew where to look at the camera. So yeah, we hang it right underneath the camera, the camera. lens because the camera lens is black and, you know, now you know right where tip. to look. <laughs> All right, so that is our little demo for the day. We're running an hour and a half. I guess that's an average that, that we're doing now. Yep. So. Um, I do want to thank each and every one of you. I mean, right now we have 399 that are on their live right now. Um, I am so happy that you all take time out of your day to watch us talk about stuff that you're interested in. And I'm seeing that Mike is probably going to go that way, and I think I'm going to get stuck doing the cleanup. <laughs> No, we're going to save this for my class coming up. No, the cleanup. This, I don't think oh, he's going to be able to drive the that The cleanup, yeah. Someone's got to clean that mess up. Yeah, someone's got to clean that mess up. So, um, like I've said before, be sure to like, share, follow, hit the bell, subscribe. You know, spread the love, people. Uh, and yeah, I get, I get a lot of positive uh, feedback from the classes. I rarely see anything negative. You know, we try to keep them kind of fun, uh, have interesting topics, some that other people have never covered. Speaking of that, if you do so, have topics, I saw there's a couple people that have posted them in there. Uh, if you do have a topic that you would like us to demo for you or pick his brain about, and it's something that we haven't thought of yet, put it in the comments down below so that way we're always looking for new ideas. Um, actually, this car, has, I think this one could be a, a pretty good uh, project car. because <laughs> This one needs headlights. What, what, what you haven't seen underneath that is probably a good thing, but um, Michael, we're going to help you out with your car. That's another one that we're going to probably end up doing because those are almost the same color as the paint. I say we try toothpaste. Toothpaste. Hey, we could do myths on the different types of YouTube things that show you how to fix those. You know, you never try to sand with the rotary. You know why? Because you sand and it goes in. It's not called sanding when you grinding. use a rotor. It's called grinding. Well, that's what kind of started <laughs> off as, as a grinder. Yeah. Um, so do we know what we're doing next week? Um, I know I say this every time. You know, 
I want to show how to remove, uh, how to work by hand. So how to use a compound to remove swirls and scratches. Ooh, good topic. By a lot of hand. people ask that. Yeah. So I have people come up to the. You know, I, I primarily answer questions on our discussion forum, but in, everywhere. And so many people come up and say, hey, I got a car, it's got swirls and scratches, I, I don't own a polisher, I want to do by these. hand. And uh, you know, I, I always tell, I tell people the same thing. It takes more skill, technique, muscle, experience, and perspiration to actually work <laughs> by hand than it does to take a simple tool like this, turn it on, and just do this. You know, but there's a whole lot of people out there that can afford a car and insurance and gas, but they can't afford a polisher. The whole, because they're, they're paying for that car insurance right. and gas. Paying for that car and insurance you know, and gas. I have gas, a perfect so. outfit for you for next week then. What's that? Mr. Miyagi. Yes, whatever. You just have your little, I'll get you Daniel's yeah. little head wrap. Uh, but I, yeah, there's a gentleman on the forum uh, that had a problem with an Alfa Romeo. He got it all scoured in the trunk lid, wants to try to fix it by hand. And see, the thing is, is most of the people that uh, show you how to work by hand, they show you putting a compound and they show you doing like this, rub. That's not how you work by hand. So tune in next week and I will show you how to work by hand. And that comes in handy like if you're wet sitting in a car and you can't get a, you got a real thin patch and you can't get your rotary buffer in there, then you got to come in here and take it out by hand. And like where the door, scratches, door, the door handles, yeah, all where kinds you of, can't get in by the mirror, underneath the mirrors. Yeah, so there's but there, there's for there you is now. a correct technique to to removing swirls and scratches by hand using compounds, polishes, and cleaner waxes. I have I have a, a separate bank account that you can pay me, and I'll send him to remove your swirls and scratches by hand. <laughs> he won't know. Promise. Yeah. No. All right, so. I won't show. You Promise. Won't show. All right. So, what do we say? Tune in next week, same time, Thursday Six. at 3 p.m. Eastern. Always. Always. All right. So, um, you're cleaning that, right? Yeah, it's easy. All right. All right. So, Class. so next class cleaning. There you go. Bye bye.